item response theory has two major advantages. The first is that you're able to place people and items on the same scale for comparison. And then the second is that it's a very mathematically rigorous. So for one, where we are saying that we can put people and items on the same scale. What does what does it mean to say we're putting people and items on the same scale? Here's here's how we can kind of conceptualize it. Item response theory really takes advantage of the relationship between the probability of responding related to some value or some measure of individual differences that we can call theta. And when we look at that probability, it's between zero and one. And there's some scale that those individual differences can take on. And generally, there's some functional form that relates them. We typically call that the item characteristic curve. Items are to have this property called difficulty or item location which lets us say, well, this is where the item is on that scale. And we're saying because of this level of the trait, this item allows us to make an inference about a person relative to that position. And then anybody else along that line, we can say just a person that has a pretty high amount of that trait or characteristic, we call it person P, and we can then relate it to some probability of responding. And so this is where a major advantage of item response theory comes in, because it allows us to make a comparison between items and people, where we can say, well, for an item's location is really where the probability of responding equals a particular value, but an individual person might have a very high probability of responding. And so the relationship between those two it's a very powerful tool to allow us to make inferences, not only about people, but about items too. The second major advantage of item response theory is that it is very mathematically rigorous. If I can spell here, and flexible. And so now this probability of responding, that is, has a very mathematically rigorous form to it that we can describe. And so we can say that the probability of responding, say one, or just an item response that's coded one, is conditional on your value of the kind of measure or trait that we're measuring, and the item's location, let's just call it B for now. And we can say that, that it, there's some function of the difference between your a person's parameter and the item. And so we can allow ourselves the rigor of being able to make definite um, statements about that functional relationship. And we can easily extend that probability if we want to, say, add more parameters. We can say not only is it a function of the location, but it's also might depend on how strongly that item relates to the underlying construct. And so now we add what is called a discrimination parameter, or this little a. So having the ability to add different parameters or add flexibility is a major advantage of IRT. Another is that we can, another part of the mathematical rigor is that we can define what that function or mapping is. And so F might be a logit transformation, which has the form of like EXP over one plus. And that allows us to have, make definitive statements, not only about the probability, but what that form takes on. and might similarly probe it. These are different link functions that we can use. And we can use a lot of different kinds of links depending on what your application is and your kind of guiding 
um, theory in your application. So being able to not only mathematically rigorously define our function and our parameters, but we can then also use that to strongly relate items and people. So those are two major advantages of IRT, placing people on the same scale and having a very mathematically rigorous um, and flexible framework 